Hey everybody and welcome back to video number two of how to set up your first marine aquarium. Uh, last time was just my initial thoughts and today the title is Doing Your Research. I'm going to share with you my recommended books, YouTube channels, online stores, online education, and then some essential topics that I think you're absolutely going to want to be an expert in before going forward. So with that, let us begin. Please <clears throat> subscribe, like this, ask any questions. I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. And this is just video two of 10 videos. All right, first off, I, I really do believe that you can learn by trial and error, and, and that's great and good, but I don't like that method um, so much uh, when, when you have live animals. I wouldn't want to trial and error by, by killing um, my livestock, you know, because I was, I, I knew very little and I just kept trying and trying and they kept dying and dying. So I really think you need to become a generalized expert before you begin. You know, it's not like having a regular pet where, you don't know, you just feed them some food and you put up a litter box or you take them outside and usually they're okay. Uh, this hobby's not at all like that. So I really think that everybody should do a minimal amount of research first and get to know all aspects of the hobby. And there is a lot of aspects of the hobby. Um, this is before you even buy your first piece of equipment. Um, you know, and then once you have a general knowledge, then, you know, start, start buying things piece by piece. Uh, if you live paycheck to paycheck like some of us, or just go ahead and, you know, dive right in if you have the cash set aside. Uh, but once you've done your research, don't wait. Dive right in. If you wait too long, you're going to forget pretty much everything you learned. Uh, so dive right in. I want to give you one quick <clears throat> word of advice, and it's just beware of online forums. They are great, don't get me wrong, and I've learned tons from online forums. But until you learn more about the hobby, you're not going to know who's blowing hot air and who's speaking a lot of truth. So please, at the beginning, read them with a grain of salt. Uh, for example, if you are looking at a forum and the forum, you know, you're trying to look up, hey, uh, let me know about how LED lights work with SPS corals. You type it in, you start reading a forum, you might not realize that, that when you're reading from 2008, you know, and that's, that's eight years ago now. Uh, and LEDs have come a long way. Or you may, you know, have somebody who didn't understand LED lights and and who ran them at 100% and burned out all their corals and now they hate all LEDs. You know, so it's really important to to know a little bit about the subject matter so you can, you know, pull apart good advice versus bad advice. All right, that being said, we're going to jump right into my recommended books. So I'm just going to go to Amazon just to show you and I will put links to all these books below so that you can check them out. The thing about books is they change rapidly. And the first one I'm going to show you is one I've owned for many years. It's called the New Marine Aquarium. Uh, and it's a great book. But if you look at the date here, it is uh, from 2002. So it's, it's already pretty old. But it has a lot of good, solid information about um, everything from setting up a system, what to think about, to different kinds of fish, so forth. Um, I would re still recommend reading this book, but don't read it as the end-all be-all because the hobby has progressed a lot since then. So this might be a good a, a good starting place, but things you think that you've learned and now you're going to implement from this book, you're going to be like, oh, actually, no, they don't really do that anymore. Um, a much better book, I think, that I have uh, read in the last couple of years it's called The New Reef Aquarium, and the reason I like this, um, I actually just downloaded this on my Kindle. Um, I think it's, I think you can even get it free if you're an Amazon Prime member, you know, one of those rentals. I'm not sure. Yeah, subscribers read for free. There you go. Oh, that's kind of limited. So The New Reef Aquarium, it's great. It's, it's not too long, um, and it's pretty updated. Uh, it talks about a lot of the things about the hobby today. Easy read, some decent pictures and just good information. You can see a lot of people rated it very highly. So I really recommend this one. If you're gonna choose one book, I would say choose the New Reef Aquarium. And the last book I would recommend is going to be the new Saltwater Aquarium Guide. Aqu 
Aquarium Guide. They're all very similar names, as you can tell. Now, to be honest, I have not read this book. Um, but when I've been doing some research on it, reading some of the reviews, it looks great. Um, it, it looks fantastic. And um, it's only eight bucks with Kindle. So uh, maybe check this one out. I did look inside and it looks it looks really good. All right. That being said, we're going to move on to YouTube channels. Now, when I started researching the hobby, I started with books, you know, because YouTube has so much going on. I didn't know who to listen to or who to trust. So I just read books and then from there I delved into things and I still recommend that you do that. Maybe choose one of my book recommendations, read it cover to cover, you have a general sense of everything that's going on and then you can start watching a lot of YouTube videos. Um, and I'm just going to recommend two channels for you. Um, the first was absolutely um, crucial to me in this hobby and it's New York Stilo. Um, for those of you who are reefers, you know New York Stilo, that's for sure. Um, he is fantastic. Um, he just, you know, shoots these videos, you know, on his home aquarium, and uh, he has a little phone, a little camera, you know, they're unedited, uncut, and he's just delightful. He um, just is so passionate about the hobby. He has tons of success. His tanks look amazing. Um, he's got this great accent, and he's got these great, these great idioms he uses. You can see he's popular. He's got over 35,000 subscribers. That's that's huge for this for this hobby. Um, check him out. He has over 100 videos. And what I did is I watched each of these videos at least twice. I mean, I spent hundreds of hours reading these videos, watching these videos. Um, and they're a great introduction. And I have taken notes from New York Stilo and implemented a lot of what he did in my aquarium. So yeah, watch those. If you want some good information, just start at the beginning and go all the way through. Um, the second channel I'm going to recommend is BRS TV. Bulk Resupply TV. This is going to come up a lot, just so you know, in what I'm talking about. I'm a really big fan of this website. Bulk Resupply, I believe they're out of Minnesota. They're a fantastic company. Um, and I'm going to show you the website later. But they make educational videos. And they've been doing it for years. Um, years and years and years and they do it through all sorts of various ways and right now they're doing this series on uh, 52 weeks of reefing you can see here and they are doing this one standard build and walking you through it step by step and everything they've done this is their main host uh, and he's come a long way uh, if you watch some of his earlier videos he's pretty awkward on camera but he gets a lot better um, the only thing about these videos is they are a company so you gotta you gotta remember that you know Yes, I do trust them for the most part, but they're also selling things, you know, so um, before you buy something through them, read the reviews, you know, if it only has a couple reviews, maybe look somewhere else. But if they have, you know, 50 reviews and, and, and then you can check it out on Amazon or things, um, they're fantastic. I have bought so many products from them. The other good thing about them is customer service is fantastic. I had bought um, a couple dosing pumps and some other stuff. Um, the day before Black Friday last year and the next day they went on like this super sale and I wasn't expecting anything but I emailed them and I said hey could you give me a partial refund maybe and they just refunded me the entire difference no questions asked which then I just used to go buy something else so they're fantastic subscribe to their channel watch their videos you're gonna learn tons and tons and tons all right moving on to online stores uh, I'm only going to show you a few, although I'm going to put a link to a lot more. Obviously, my favorite I've already talked about is Bulk Reef Supply. And it's mainly because their videos are so educational. Uh, their prices are also extremely competitive. And their layout is super easy. I just love it. I mean, they have these little images. You can click on all the topics from RODI. Then you look down here and they show you everything they're selling. Rock and sand, additives, so on and so forth. For equipment, I don't think there's a better website to go to if you live in the U.S. Now, for those of you that don't live in the U.S., if you live in Europe, Canada, um, Australia even, I'm not sure if this is going to be the best option. Um, I'm not sure how shipping works. And I know you have a lot of different products, especially the European market has different products than we have here. There's a lot of overlap, but there's also a lot of differences. So um, I guess I'm speaking mainly to the American audience. I'm not sure uh, if you'd want to pay for the shipping internationally for this one. But for the American audience and probably the Canadian audience, um, this is a great site 
for everything except livestock, right? Couple good things about it too is you can create an account, you become a preferred reefer, and then you get free shipping over anything over I think forty nine dollars, and they basically give you ten percent off. Um, so really, really fantastic website. I highly recommend it. Um, absolutely. Another one I am a fan of is TB Aquatics. Another good site. I must say I just don't buy from them as much for the only reason that I really like the website of Bulk Reef Supply a lot more. Um, and uh, I love their customer service, but TB Aquatics, great selection as well. Um, you can check them out for sure. Now, if for buying actual livestock, there's a few sites. Now, I think you should buy from your local fish store whenever possible, especially if your local fish store really takes care of their livestock, if they quarantine their livestock, if you know, if, if their place is clean and you can tell that they have respect and knowledge, I would buy from there, absolutely. Um, shipping is stressful, and yes, things are being shipped to them, um, but, you know, shipping directly to yourself um, is an okay option. Um, I don't do it very often, um, but that's, that's just my opinion. But a few places you can look at. One is liveaquaria.com. This is Doctors Fosters and Smith, I think. But you can go through and just check out all sorts of things they're selling from corals, live rocks, so on and so forth, reef cleaner packs, you know, and then ORA fish. These are farmed fish. This is a really good way to go. You know, things pulled, um, things that are farmed. You know, they have fish, corals, and invertebrates. So, you know, you want to check out what kind of farm fish are available that aren't pulled from the reef. Here you go. It's largely clownfish, you know, and that's due to the popularity of the species. Um, but it's a great site uh, for a bunch of living things. Uh, another one that I've recently become aware of that I really like is Vivid Aquariums. And this is again for livestock. They're a uh, they're, um, brick and mortar store as well. Uh, pretty great actually. And um, you, they have what you see is what you get. You can tell the facility is just, it's just dazzling, it's so clean. Um, you know, their videos aren't as good. To be honest, I don't find the the owner um, as engaging, but um, from what I've seen so far, you know, this is a place I would definitely buy from. Um, and then one more place I would mention is, of course, MarineDepot.com. This definitely is not for livestock again, but um, for equipment. You know, you're just gonna find different families of of products here. There is a lot of overlap between TB Aquatics, Bulk Reef Supply, and Marine Depot, but there are gonna some things that are only found on each site. Um, so absolutely check this one out. I will add links to all the online stores um, that I've talked about and ones that I haven't, so you can go through, check them out, click on them, maybe some are closer to you, maybe you know some of these. Um, but anyway, a really good place to start. I recommend Bulk Reef Supply, TB Aquatics, and uh, Live Aquaria and Vivid Aquariums. Um, those are the websites I, I highly recommend. Okay, I'll be right back and we will talk about online education. Hey everybody, welcome back. All right, so regarding websites to, um, online websites that are gonna help you learn, all right? Um, there's so many things to learn. Um, one site I like is reefcleaners.org and um, I use this one for identifying nuisance algae. You know, when you're starting out in the hobby, you don't know which is which, and you know, you need to know what kind of nuisance algae you have, so you know, you know how to treat it and how to get rid of it, and what sort of cleanup crew is going to eat it. Are hermit crabs, or are emerald crabs, or what about slugs? What kind of slugs? And so, this is a really great visual website that talks about a lot of that. Um, another good education site is HomeAquaria.com. Um, I like this one. It just has a lot of information, you know, all sorts of random stuff about freshwater, saltwater. You go up here, you click on saltwater, um, and just a lot of kind of fun stuff on here. Um, you know, you're not going to find a lot of specific things you're looking for, but, um, some interesting articles you're going to find for sure. Uh, another website is Reef Central. Dot com and reefcentral.com um, 
is basically uh, an online forum and you are going to be able to search their forums and find out tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of, of stuff. Anything you're looking for, ask a question on Google, it'll probably pop up. Let's just do an example. Let's ask a question. Um, what are the par ratings for Eco Tech Radions? It's probably going to come up Reef Central. Let's see. Ecotech Marine, Aquatic Log. Uh, here's Reef Central. There you go. Pretty high up near the top is Reef Central. And you can see they span all the way from 2013 all the way to 2014. So you can um, find out quite a bit of information. All right. Um, another cool website is when we're talking about um, farmed animals, the main farmed animals come from Aura, O-R-A. Um, and I believe their facility located down in Florida. But super cool. You can look at um, sustainable fish, corals, uh, clams, so on and so forth. And these are all aquaculture. These are not pulled from the sea. You know, this is very sustainable. Um, most clowns you see in fish stores in the U.S. are going to be Aura. Um, really cool place. You can learn quite a bit about it. And lastly, this is just one really specific thing. I'm going to show you this article, Chemistry and the Aquarium, by Randy Holmes Farley. And it is fantastic. When you are beginning to learn about everything relating to alkalinity, calcium, pH, everything, this article is huge. It's super long and you're gonna have to read it several times and you're not gonna understand it at first. But once you have a better understanding of the different parameters in the water, the interrelationship between those things, you are gonna love this article and I will definitely put a link to it below um, so that you can learn about water chemistry. Absolutely fantastic. And lastly in this section is reef2reef.com. Another great website just for educational purposes. Um, there's going to be a forum here, which is the main thing that you're going to like. You can just type stuff into the forum, look things up, get user feedback. Remember, just kind of keep them with a grain of salt. All right, that being said, I'm going to pull up my Apex Fusion screen here and just talk a little bit about essential topics that I really think um, you should research before you begin. All right, and I'll, I'll, I'll put these links down below as well so that you can go through and spend your time um, researching them. Number one, basic water chemistry. Absolutely crucial. You know, you need to understand the interrelationship between calcium and alkalinity. You know, how does ammonia, nitrogen, phosphate, how do those things interact? Um, and of course, um, how do those play into the nitrogen cycle? Uh, as absolutely basic, essential knowledge that before you do anything, you should learn to become an, ex an expert in the nitrogen cycle. So at least you understand what happens when, when a fish um, poops or when um, food decays, turns into ammonia to nitrite, nitrate, so on and so forth. Really important stuff to understand the water chemistry and also so that you can care for your fish really, really important. Um, you're going to want to know about the role of carbon dioxide, oxygen, pH, temperature, and salinity. You know, it took me forever to figure out, you know, it was like, why is my pH so low? You know, and, I, and of course, any of you who, who have had this problem before, it's carbon dioxide. When my family got home and we started breathing heavy, pH plummeted. You know, I lived in an apartment with new windows. I could not keep my pH up because I needed um, oxygen. So, so learn about those. Um, another essential topic is understand the cost involved. Uh, my last video I talked about my tank, spending about five grand. Um, you can do it for three grand. You can probably do it for cheaper than that. Um, but know that it's gonna be thousands of dollars for this hobby and just know that going in. The time involved. If you think this is something you can just set up and let it go, you know, it's gonna fail and it's gonna be a huge pain in the butt. And if this is not something you're super passionate about, you know, um, don't do it right away. See if it's an interest that sticks around because you're gonna be spending hours a week on this hobby, hours a week. And a lot of it is cleaning. And if you don't love this hobby, you're not gonna to wanna to do that. Insurance, I'm sure a lot of you haven't thought about that, but you know, have you updated your insurance to include your fish tank? You know, especially if you have a larger one, you have thousands of dollars. 
and your insurance may not cover your water damage. It may not cover the livestock in case something happens, you know? Uh, it may not cover your neighbors who live in the apartment below you and you might be sued because your aquarium breaks. So you need to talk to your insurance company and you need to make sure you have everything insured properly so that you're not liable. <clears throat> and then lastly is equipment. You know, just start making lists of equipment. You know, I would recommend pricing out equipment, um, different websites, check out eBay, and just, just learn all the different kinds of equipment that you're gonna need. Uh, the next essential topic is size of tank and the location. Um, you need to find out right now where you're gonna put your tank. Um, is it safe to put it there? Do you, you're probably gonna have to buy some shims for it. <clears throat> are you gonna get a nano tank? It's gonna be harder to keep, but cheaper. Or are you gonna go with a 90 gallon tank, which is a good medium size? Um, uh, do you have a good spot for it where it doesn't get direct sunlight, where the temperature is steady? Um, you know, so do your research on all the do's and don'ts of tank. And if you just keep watching these videos, we'll talk about that a lot more in depth later. Uh, essential topics number six, your electric bill. Uh, it is expensive to run uh, uh, a um, saltwater aquarium, uh, especially if you live in an area that is really hot because you're going to have to pay for the air conditioning. You're going to have to pay for a chiller. You know, what kind of lighting you put in. If you put in T5s, um, metal halides, you're going to pay a lot more for electricity than you're going to if you put in LEDs. So just understand that. Understand the relationship between watts and amps, um, and take a peek at your electrical panel. Uh, if you are plugging all this equipment into a one wall panel and you also have other things like a TV or something else, you might blow the circuit and you might crash your entire tank. So be realistic with how many amps you're gonna require and see if you have space in your electrical panel or do you need to upgrade your panel. My whole system at max pulls about four amps which is um, a low amount, but I've already had to isolate one circuit breaker and not plug anything else into it just to be on the safe side. Number seven, um, the limits of various livestock. Again, I think it's really important to have a sense of what you want in your tank. Are you gonna have a community tank or an aggressive tank? Now, for so those of you who have been in the freshwater hobby, you can put tons and tons and tons of fish in a freshwater tank. It's really pretty easy to do that. You know, there's not a lot of damage, but in a saltwater tank, that just does not work very well. You know, so if you really know that you want to have a blue tang, well, you better do your research and figure out what size tank you need, because you're probably going to need at least a 90 gallon. You know, what if you want to have a puffer fish, you know, or a toby? You know, those are semi-aggressive, you know, and um, same with clownfish even. They're semi-aggressive. So you can't combine certain species in a smaller tank. So you need to understand the limits of the livestock from community livestock to aggressive livestock and how they're going to interact. For example, so many people end up buying snails and hermit crabs when the hermit crabs will eventually just kill all your snails and take their shells. So are you going to go with snails or are you going to go with hermit crabs? Now I'm not saying you can't have both, it's just considerations that, that, that you need to take care of. So, um, and then lastly is the time commitment necessary. Just know that you're going to put in a lot of time. Um, and know that this is gonna take a lot of patience and a lot of love. So just make sure you're ready for this. All right, that's it for this video. Looking ahead uh, to video three, we're gonna dive into the nitty gritty finally. Um, you've done all your research, you've looked at all the websites, you have a good understanding of the equipment and the livestock out there. Video number three, choosing your tank and your stand and everything involved with that. So everybody, thank you for watching and we will see you next time.